All right, guys, next circuit to look at in the RLC review is an RC series circuit. So right now we would have the AC source, we would have a resistor, and a capacitor in series with the resistor. And remember that the voltage is on each of those guys is 90 degrees out of phase. So, but the current is the same. There's only one path for the current to flow. So we have IT is equal to IR is equal to IC. R being the resistive value, C being the capacitive component in the circuit. Okay, so if the current is the same, then the voltage is a little bit messed up. Uh, so we're going to use, because the two of them are 90 degrees out of phase, we can use Pythagoras. We'll use the adjacent value squared plus the opposite value squared, and then we'll take the square root of the, the addition of those values. Okay, if we're going to plot this out on a right angle triangle, this would be our resistive voltage, this would be our capacitive voltage, and our total would be the hypotenuse. The angle at which determines that ratio between the voltage on the resistor and voltage on the total would be this angle right here. Okay, so current's the same, voltage is 90 degrees out of phase, so we can find our total voltage by using Pythagoras. Uh, now, there's no reciprocal equation needed for Z because it is a series circuit. So again, if Z is the hypotenuse, then we'll take the resistive value as the adjacent, plus the opposite value as the capacitive reactance, and then we'll take the square root of those guys, or the addition of those values. Okay, if we're looking at this in terms of a right angle triangle, resistive value always is on the adjacent, capacitive reactance is on the opposite, and the impedance is on the hypotenuse. Again, that angle that we looked at before is the exact same angle, the same ratio between VR and VT versus R and Z, because it is the same triangle, same uh, angle. Okay, if we look at the power now, VA, or volt amps, is equal to the power value, the wattage squared, plus the opposite value, which in this case is VAR C. Square that guy, and then we'll take the square root of the addition of those values. Okay, right angle triangle, resistive value goes here, capacitive value goes here, total value goes here. Same angle, same ratios, same right angle triangle. Okay, if we're looking for a uh, power factor, power factor is always watts over VA, regardless of what type of circuit that we're looking at. In this case, the current is the same, so we could find that same ratio between VR and VT. We can also find that same ratio between R and Z. And all of those guys are looking at the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so they all look for cos. If we're looking for the angle that corresponds to that, well, we'll just take the inverse cos of that ratio, parafactor. Okay, in addition to that, what else do we need? We look at, uh, we've got Eli the Iceman. In this case, it is an ice circuit where the current leads. So remember, whatever's on the left-hand side is leading, whatever is on the right-hand side is lagging. So current leads, voltage lags. However it works, if this works for you with the Iceman, then use that. If the, you can think of the fact that current has to flow over to the capacitor first, and then a voltage will develop there, try that. Okay, in addition to that, what else we need? We have uh, capacitive reactance. So we've got this ratio here, and if we're looking for XC, XC is one over two pi times frequency times capacitance. So if we can just jam that in here, XC is equal to one over 2 times pi times frequency times capacitance. And if we're looking for the capacitance, well, we can just exchange capacitive reactance and capacitance. 1 over 2 times pi times frequency times Xc. Okay, so you can stop the video here. You can write down all the equations that you need for this type of circuit. But let's move on to the example page. 
Okay, so for this one, what do we got? We got 120 for the source. Remember, this is a series circuit, so that 120 volts will be dropped across the resistive component and the capacitive component. Um, so what are we gonna do here? We've got the, the capacitance. Well, we can use the capacitance in order to find the XC. So in this case, with 100 microfarads, when we punch that in, then we would find the XC to be Sorry, guys, hang on. The XC is going to be what? 26.525 ohms of reactants. Okay, so we've got that. We've got the resistance. We're trying to find the current as fast as possible, so we'll have to use Pythagoras. The resistance value, 10 squared, plus 26.525 squared. Square root will provide us with the impedance. So that value is 28.347 ohms. Okay, so refer back to the equation page there. Z is equal to R squared plus XC squared square root, giving us 28.347 ohms. And now we can use that to find the current. We have the voltage, we have the impedance for the entire circuit. So 120 volts, divided by 28.347 provides us with a circuit current of 4.233 amps. And now we're rocking, okay? Because remember that this here is Ohm's law. The current can now be brought across, 4.233 amps right across. Because it's a series circuit. Multiplying the current by the resistance, 4.233 times 10, gives us 42.33 volts across the resistor. 4.233 amps on the capacitor times 26.525 ohms of capacitor reactance provides us with a voltage of 112.28 volts. Okay, then you're looking at those values and like, hang on, something's messed because I have 42 volts on the resistor. I have 112 volts across the capacitor, but my source voltage is 120. But remember that those two voltages don't happen at the same time. So to double check your answer, take 42.33, square that, plus 112.28 squared. Add those two values and take the square root and you'll find a value that's very, very close to the 120 volts. Okay, anything in this column right here, or this row, uh, is just different forms of power. So VA is voltage times current. 120 volts times 4.233 amps gives us 507.96 volt amps. If we take the voltage, 42.33 volts times 4.233 amps, we get a wattage of 179. 0.18 watts. And the VARS, the VARS is just potential energy that's held on the capacitor. There's no heat lost or anything, it's just potential energy. So they call that volt amps reactive. And again, it's just voltage times current. 112.28 volts times 4.233 amps provides us with a VARS value of 475.28 VARS C. Okay, now we got everything. The only thing we need is the power factor. The power factor is the ratio between watts and VA, or between, let's see, VR and VT, or between R and Z. Okay, this one is really poor. This one is 0.35, or it's only 35% efficient. Okay, if we want to find the angle, the total angle that the resistive value and the total value are out of phase by, then we'll take 0.35 and you hit second function cos in order to find the angle of 69.34 degrees out of phase. Okay, so to start with, I mean, with this one we were stuck. We had to find Z, All right? It's not too bad though, a little bit of Pythagoras. 10 squared plus 26.525 squared to give us a total impedance of 28.347. We use that with the 120 to find our circuit current. That current is the same all the way through because it's a series circuit. So then we drop that right across and use simple Ohm's law. 
in order to find our individual voltages, 42.33 and 112.28. Okay, then we can find all of our power values. You can double check those values because remember that 179.18 watts plus 475.28 vars, right? If you square each of those and then take the square root, then Pythagorean theorems will give you 507.96 VA. Okay, then the same ratio exists between uh, VR and VT, R and Z, watts over VA. And all three of those will give you a ratio of 0.35 or 35% efficient, uh, which is really poor, which means that the resistive voltage and the total voltage um, are 69.35 degrees out of phase.